My name is Lauren Lau, and this is my adventure in Grand Colombia. Welcome back to the Grand Columbia channel. In today's installment, part three about moving in Armenia, Colombia, I want to talk to you about how I made my choice. First, there's a decision to move. No matter if you're moving across town or across borders, you have the same thoughts and considerations. Budget. I was currently paying around $220 a month for my two-bedroom, two-bath apartment in the heart of the best part of Armenia. For me, it's important to keep rent to about a quarter of my income or less. I would set my budget for the past two years to stay under $350 a month at most to account for possible spikes in exchange rates, but essentially to live under $300 a month. So that was my goal and my budget. Space. I've always lived in larger spaces. The last place was fine being so tiny but a touch under 500 square feet. However, that was when I was only really sleeping there and spent all my time out and about. But after six months being trapped there, I realized I had to stretch out again. I set my goals on a place 650 square feet or larger. I also needed three bedrooms and two baths to accommodate having a video studio and a place to store my equipment. Location. Knowing Armenia as well as I do, I knew precisely the areas I wanted to live in. I set my goals wide at first and included four barrios. Where I was living, La Lorena, near the Candillo Mall, the Castellania area, and Centenario. I did consider and check out two places in the south, such as the San Jose Barrio, but quickly ruled them out. I considered only because in the north you pay a premium of about 20%. Having rent for a three-bedroom around $175 a month is very tempting, but for me the quality of the location is more important. I wanted there to be a comfortable walking area without much inclined so as not to get discouraged. I wanted to be near the places you want to live, such as, you know, pharmacies, supermarkets, taxis, banks. I wanted a place that had ample parking for me and any guests. While I have a car, I'm planning next year to buy a small motorcycle for fast local trips, you know, for errands. Having some amenities was a plus. Having a place for barbecue or a group meeting, you know, it's always desirable. Emotion. I wanted a place that evoked positive emotions. I wanted to be able to wake up every day and be amazed at the life I'm able to live. I wanted to be able to see a panorama, not be buried in the mundane. Owner. I wanted to deal with the owner. I like to build a relationship and have references for the future. I like to have someone to count on if there's issues. I don't like dealing with bureaucracies. This really comes in handy later, and I'll explain it in an upcoming video, part four or five. While there are always smaller, discardable other considerations, that was essentially the list I used. I first narrowed the list. I went walking in areas I like, taking pictures of the for rent signs with the numbers and pictures of the building or houses. Yeah, I considered several houses too. I then went back home and got on the internet. While there's a lot of agent sites, I avoid those. The best place and most used by people is actually Facebook Marketplace. I set up the search parameters, which by the way, often are not followed by the posters, so keep that in mind, and started to browse through them based on my criteria. I would match up any that I saw as potential and any that were listed. That way, I could get a lot of specifics without having to call anyone. I could see prices, the size, interior pictures. From that, I could create a list of probables, possibles, and fringe places. In my case, I had about six in the probable category, the same in the possible, and I think it was four in the fringe. Uh, what is fringe? Those are the places that were in other areas but looked really good. 
As I further worked the priorities, I began to set up appointments to actually go and look. Now, I only did video of the few that I showed you. Those were of great interest to me. In each case, I would have rented if I could have. But in several, I waited too long to decide, which is only a few days here. Now, I was asked a lot, and it was a subject of much discussion from you guys, about two places that had a lot of stairs. One was a third floor walk up. One was a fourth floor, and the third one was a fifth floor. I was asked if I was crazy, in fact. But look at it this way. The one on the fifth floor was next to my favorite supermarket. It was next to the mall, mall uh, the Candillo, and within a few blocks of my favorite restaurants. The apartment was stunning and it had well over a thousand square feet. It was a place you would never find under $400 a month if it had an elevator. So still, fifth floor? Well, think of it this way. Since I was close to everything, the total walking distance would be much less. And you ask, what if I were sick? Well, everything is delivered if you want, including doctors. So for the sake of an amazing place, it was worth it to me. But what happened? I spoke directly to the owner, but he had hired an agency. Well, I talked to him first. Another person came a day later through the agent. She was kind of upset because I spoke to the owner, so she got the contract from the other guy first. If it's any consolation, he paid about $70 a month more through her. The other places fell prey to a typical issue here, that some people really suck at follow-through. While I was first in line, several people had been looking, and she just took the easiest that were prepared to sign in the moment. You know, I can't blame them, but I never allow myself to feel forced or pressure until I've slept on it. It took a few minutes, but I realized that one of the places on my list, the act high on the list, was a building I had looked at three years ago. At that time, only one tower was built. Today, it's all finished with both towers, except the new guard entrance area. That'll be done in a month. Also three years ago, I looked at a very small place there. In these buildings of 17 floors each, there's a total of 204 places. There are two advertised sizes, 480 square feet and 720 square feet. However, there are a handful of places that are about 800 square feet. On the 10th floor of my building where I am, there are two on one side of the building and I got one of them. Once I realized all this, I became more excited to check it out, and I called about it. It was being handled through a large and respectable agency. They're considered to be very honest. I have a local friend, knows all about real estate, and actually recommended I go through them uh, some time ago. However, I wanted to deal with the owner. I expressed that, and they said, no problem. They would have them meet me here. So we met, and since I already knew a lot about the buildings, I knew about the location, I was actually ready to make the offer that day. I just didn't want to be involved in agent fees, deposits, you know, that sort of thing. So I made the offer for $290 equivalent, no deposit, but I had strong references, and I wanted to move in date on the 5th, which was six days later. He agreed right then and there, so we met the next day at the notary, signed the contract. The contract was on the agency letterhead, but it was a very basic one-year contract. By now, I know what to look for. So that's how I arrived at my decision. And what do I have? Budget. I paid about $290 a month. That will fluctuate between $280 and $320, so it fit my budget. Also. I will not tie up any money in a deposit that I prefer to use for the driving school that I need as soon as possible. Space. It's a three bedroom, two bath, so I have a great room for the video studio, sitting in now, and a bedroom if I ever have a guest. It's almost 800 square feet, so it's 300 square feet larger than the last place. It has a huge, awesome balcony and a separate dining room. Location. 
doesn't get much better. It's different than where I was looking, but it's, it's awesome. I'm in the heart of large green spaces and next to a bamboo jungle. I have a river at the base of the building that sends cool breezes all day and night and actually feel like air conditioning. I'm attached to a mall and the home center. That's the Columbia's Lowe's. There are two large supermarkets within one block. The walk is flat and extremely scenic. Taxis line up in the mall, so catching a taxi is no problem, and it's the same for buses. It's a very exclusive part of the city, yet I'm still in Stratus 5. Not sure how that happened, but I'll take it. And the emotion. It checks all the boxes. I have a great view of the city, mountains. Basically, I'm in awe. And the owner. While it was technically an agency, I have all that I wanted for the transaction, direct contact with the owner, and a properly, in my view, negotiated deal, while still having a little support from the agent, which I'll discuss in an upcoming video. So what's important to you? Would you compromise in order to save some money? Would you prefer to live in an older part of town? Are you surprised at the amount of good choices I had in my budget? Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments. And stay tuned for the next installments, which I discuss moving companies, internet companies, and then at long last, what is I truly hate about Colombia, or South America for that matter. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.